So my presentation today is over hoof rot. Hoof rot is an acrotting infectious disease of the hoof. It is uh, most commonly caused by Fusobacterium necroform. Um, it's a microbe, it's the most common form of it, and it's an anaerobe, which means it thrives in low oxygen levels, and the bacteria will actually make pus to help kill off all the uh, oxygen and make the environment better. Um, there's two different associations, whether you're talking about cattle or sheep and goats, is these two bacteria, which we'll talk about what they do later. Um, this bacteria actually lives in the rumen of ruminants and it will come out through the feces and it will live into the soil up to 10 months and this is how it spreads. Um, here's kind of an overview of where foot rot is usually seen, it's seen between the two um, toes of the hoof. And here are the two cofactoring bacteria. This first one right here is found in bovine, and this will produce a protein enzyme, and it will basically damage the subcutaneous tissue and tendons. And the second one, which is found in sheep and goats, that's what ovine means, is same thing, it's an enzyme that kills the connective tissue between the horn and the flesh of the hoof. And here's an actual picture, this is on a sheep. Right there we can see like the pus from it creating its environment and it's between the two horns of the hoof. So how do you diagnose foot rot? You're commonly going to see lameness upon the animals, an elevated body temperature because it's fighting an infection. There's going to be some inflammation. You'll see some abscess and ulcers along the feet. Most commonly, you would just find a foul smell. Usually when you're trimming hooves is when you uh, notice it. This is a severe case, and it looks like it's in a goat, but you can see the hoof rots right here. This is probably from bad hoof trimming, and yeah, that one's pretty bad. So here's three common um, foot problems you see in them. We're talking about foot rot, which is the one in the middle but it's usually misdiagnosed with scaled or foot abscess. So this is kind of a chart showing you the difference. How do you treat it? So if caught early, it is treated just with a uh, bacteria, or uh, an antibiotic, which is seen here. This, it's a lot of times over the counter. Um, this is not, not brand specific, this is just an example. Um, if it's not caught early, it will take several days and you're probably going to need to consult a vet and they will give you a stronger antibiotic treatment. So how do you prevent foot rot? Well, if, you, if the livestock is kept on pasture, you want to keep them changing pastures so there's no standing manure buildup. Foot rot bacteria are normally found in feces like I mentioned earlier. So if you can just keep the livestock moving between pastures, you can eliminate the manure buildup. Um, animals are always exposed to foot rot. There must be some kind of you know, abscess cut or something in the hoof in order for the bacteria to get in there and cause hoof rot. So if, as long as you keep your hooves nice and clean, you shouldn't have a problem with it. And you most commonly see foot rot after a rainy period where it, the manure gets all wet and kind of soupy and when the animals stand in it that's usually the feet get soft and they tend to crack easier when they're soft. So you usually see hoof rot right after a wet spell. So you want to try to keep the hooves dry so whether that be an elevated area having a drainage ditch anything to keep the hoofs drier than they would. So there's no real feed additives that would help. There's been some research showing that zinc has helped with um, the tissues and the nails around it. So that some say that, that supplementing zinc in the food will help hoof rot, but that is kind of uh, off and on on what, what the studies show. Um, antibiotics, which with the new rules, it has to be vet prescribed. 
And there is a vaccine for Fusobac no, Fusobacteria necroforum. It is meant to prevent uh, liver abscesses, but it does also help with foot rot. So this is kind of an interesting chart I found, and this kind of shows what uh, the hoof problems you'll see in milking dairy cow, depending on how far into the milking they are. Here you can see the different ones. So hoof rot is gonna be this one in gray. So you tend to get, gonna get hoof rot in dairy cows between one to 60 days, and as it goes down, you can see it decreases a lot. It decreases yeah. a lot. Do you have any idea why the first 60 days are so crazy? No. I don't know, I don't know either. No, I, I, just, I thought it was pretty interesting. I know they're under a lot of stress, so maybe they're less likely to fight a bacterial infection yeah, if it does they're, get in. They're more yeah. They're milking a lot and they've got a lot going on. Yeah, but yeah, towards the last day you rarely see yeah, any. Yeah, nothing. And between any of it. Right. Yeah. And here are my sources, and thank you very much. Okay, I got one question. How about a foot bath? Because sometimes, like with cattle, if they walk in, like milking cows, they walk in some place, you can have a foot bath where they have to walk through. Yeah. Did you read anything about that? Um, so I, I, a lot of the information I pulled with, was from this beef magazine. Okay. So I didn't look yeah. into too much about okay. dairy. Yeah, because cattle, it's hard to get it because they're usually on pastures. They're usually on feedlots yeah. and pastures, yeah. They don't go through, yeah. That would be a good idea. Yeah, they don't go through a common spot. But you know